Starship hasn't carried a payload to orbit. It hasn't flown humans. It hasn't completed one full mission. Yet it's already the most talked-about rocket in history. Why does an unfinished vehicle capture more attention than proven systems flying for decades? SpaceX just revealed something that changes Mars landing completely. The vertical touchdown everyone expects. That might not be the plan anymore. What if the breakthrough for surviving Mars isn't about landing upright at all? To understand why SpaceX is rethinking everything, we need to see what they're dealing with right now. When Super Heavy lights up 33 Raptor engines, it generates 7,600 tons of thrust. That's roughly the power of four Saturn V rockets firing simultaneously. After two and a half minutes at 70 kilometers altitude, the booster separates. Starship's six engines ignite and push the ship to 7.8 kilometers per second, orbital velocity. Mission complete, cargo deployed, now comes the hard part, landing. SpaceX's current solution is Mechazilla, the launch tower with two massive mechanical arms. Instead of landing legs, the 71-meter-tall, 200-ton booster positions itself mid-air while those arms close around it. When it works, it looks like science fiction. But here's what SpaceX engineers see. A single-point failure that could destroy hundreds of millions of dollars of infrastructure in seconds. Think about the margins. The booster approaches at specific velocity, exact position, precise timing. A guidance error of just meters could send 200 tons of metal into the tower. One bad landing doesn't just lose a booster, it shuts down the entire launch site. And Starship isn't designed to fly once a month. SpaceX wants dozens of flights weekly. This is why they keep looking at ocean landings. Falcon 9 proved the concept. Boosters touch down on drone ships hundreds of kilometers downrange with meter-level accuracy. A failed landing loses one booster, not the launch pad. But scaling this to Starship creates massive engineering challenges. Falcon 9's drone ships are roughly 90 meters long. A Super Heavy class ship needs to exceed 120 meters with reinforced decks strong enough to handle forces several times greater. The station keeping systems must hold position in rough seas while a vehicle delivering exponentially more kinetic energy descends. It's possible, but expensive and complex. Yet all of this Mechazilla ocean platforms landing legs only matters for Earth operations because Starship wasn't built for Earth. Every test, every upgrade, every iteration points toward one destination, Mars. And Mars changes everything. Here's what makes Mars landing brutally difficult. Earth's atmosphere is thick. It does most of the work slowing spacecraft down. Enter at 7.8 kilometers per second, and within minutes, air resistance bleeds off most of that speed. Heat shield glows, plasma forms, but the ship slows fast. Mars offers no such luxury. The atmosphere exists, but it's whisper thin, just 1% of Earth's density. A spacecraft arriving from interplanetary space hits Mars' atmosphere at 11 to 12 kilometers per second. That's 40 to 50% faster than Earth orbital speed, but there's almost nothing there to slow it down. On Earth, Peak heating lasts maybe two to three minutes. On Mars, the vehicle stays inside a plasma envelope for 10 to 15 minutes. Total heat accumulation becomes the killer. Peak temperatures reach 2,500 to 2,700 degrees Celsius compared to Earth's 1,600 degrees. Starship's current heat shield, designed for rapid reuse on Earth, won't survive Mars entry without major upgrades. But surviving entry only gets you to the next problem, actually landing. NASA's Mars rovers used parachutes. Perseverance deployed a 21.5-meter chute to slow down a one-ton rover. The physics don't scale. Starship arriving at Mars weighs 200 to 250 tons. 
you'd need a parachute larger than a football field, and Mars's thin atmosphere couldn't inflate it properly anyway. Parachutes are off the table. This means Starship must rely almost entirely on engines. On Earth, final landing uses one or two Raptors firing for seconds. On Mars, engine braking starts at 6 to 10 kilometers altitude, not meters. To generate sufficient thrust in thin atmosphere, six or more engines must fire simultaneously during descent. This is why future Mars-focused starships might carry nine engines total instead of six. Now we reach the moment of truth. Touchdown. Current thinking says vertical landing. Stand the ship upright, fire engines, extend legs, settle down like Falcon 9. It works on Earth because landing pads are flat and engineered. It works on the Moon because gravity is only 16% of Earth's. Mars gravity hits 38% of Earth's, strong enough that a 250-ton starship still weighs 95 tons. All that force channels through landing legs into whatever surface exists below. And Martian terrain isn't engineered concrete. It's rocks, dust, slopes, and uncertainty. Every Mars lander before Starship weighed less than two tons. Small legs spread the load. But how do you design legs strong enough to support 95 tons without adding so much mass? They defeat the purpose. The engineering problem compounds. Heavier legs need more fuel to land, which needs bigger tanks, which adds more weight. SpaceX looked at this equation and asked a different question. What if we're solving the wrong problem? What if vertical landing, the method everyone assumes is correct, isn't actually optimal for Mars? The horizontal landing concept flips the entire approach. Starship still enters belly first using its heat shield. Engines still fire at altitude to reduce speed. But instead of rotating vertical near the surface, the ship rolls horizontal. At two to three meters per second, walking speed, it settles onto its side. The physics suddenly favor this approach. Lying horizontal distributes weight across the entire vehicle length instead of concentrating it through four legs. Contact area increases dramatically. Ground pressure per square meter drops significantly. Uneven terrain becomes less critical because the ship can settle across rocks and variations without tipping. But the advantages go deeper than just touchdown dynamics. A horizontal starship on Mars transforms from landing vehicle into instant infrastructure. The entire side becomes a ground-level platform. Hatches open directly to the surface. No ladders, no lifts, no complex egress systems needed. Cargo doors become ramps. The ship itself forms the foundation of your first base. Vertical landing requires you to build infrastructure around the ship. Horizontal landing means the ship is the infrastructure. For a first Mars mission carrying limited resources, this distinction matters enormously. There's also the return mission factor. A vertical starship needs perfect level ground to stand safely while fuel is produced and loaded. A horizontal ship sits stable on any terrain that doesn't have severe slopes. Refueling operations become simpler when you're not worried about the vehicle tipping over. Critics immediately point out the obvious concern. How do you take off horizontally? You don't. The ship would rotate vertical before launch, using minimal fuel in Mars's light gravity. Think of it as decoupling the landing problem from the launch problem. Solve each separately with the optimal method, rather than forcing one solution to work for both. None of this is officially confirmed. SpaceX hasn't announced horizontal landing as the plan. But engineering analysis reveals why they're seriously considering it. The math works better. The operational advantages compound. And most importantly, it solves problems that vertical landing creates, rather than trying to overcome them through brute force. What we're watching isn't just about landing legs versus landing horizontally. It's about SpaceX's entire approach to Mars architecture. Question every assumption, optimize for the actual mission, and don't let tradition dictate engineering decisions. This isn't just about how Starship lands, it's about how we think about Mars missions entirely. 
For decades, aerospace engineering followed one rule. If vertical landing works on Earth, scale it up for Mars. SpaceX looked at that assumption and asked, why? Why force a solution designed for one environment onto a completely different world? Why accept engineering compromises when physics offers better options? Horizontal landing isn't the easier path, it's the smarter one. It transforms problems into advantages. Ground pressure, distribute it across the hull. Base infrastructure, the ship becomes the foundation. Terrain uncertainty, contact area solves it. Every challenge that makes vertical landing harder on Mars makes horizontal landing more practical. We're watching SpaceX rewrite the rulebook in real time. The company that caught a rocket with mechanical arms, that lands boosters on drone ships, that turned reusability from fantasy into routine, they're doing it again. But this time, the stakes are an entire planet. The first starship to land on Mars might not stand tall like we expect. It might settle on its side, hatch doors opening directly to red Martian soil, becoming humanity's first permanent structure on another world. That's not less impressive. It's engineering at its finest. What do you think? Does horizontal landing make sense, or should SpaceX stick with vertical? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If this breakdown gave you a new perspective, hit that like button and share it with space fans who need to see this. And subscribe to New Space Review. We're covering every development as SpaceX prepares to make history on Mars. Thanks for watching.